Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. If you are an XRP holder, I have great news for you. The reserves that are needed to be held in an XRP wallet has been voted by the validators to be decreased. Um, so that's going to drop and be cut in half. So I want to share the details there and why this is good for XRP and the XRP ledger usage. In addition, we're seeing more coverage around the SEC crypto Ripple XRP lawsuit. So we have more people talking about this, which is what we want, uh, because we need the SEC to lose this lawsuit they have against Ripple. We're also going to talk about the NYDIG, or also known as NYDIG, their respective Bitcoin fund. There's some updates there. Now, before we get into it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin has low fees. You can also stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. I'm currently staking Miami coin. And by the way, OKCoin Crypto Exchange is the only place you can buy and stake Miami coin. And I'm earning some really nice rewards, 430% uh, APY, which is pretty cool. So if you want to sign up, link in the description. All right, guys, I've got some great interviews coming up for you. I want to let you all know about uh, Romain Pellerin, who's the uh, CTO of Cardano, Mike Belsch at BitGo, Caitlin Long at Avanti, Hester Peirce, SEC Commissioner, Chris Giancarlo, Sheila Warren of the World Economic Forum, Sean Ford of Algorand, who I've interviewed before, Brian Brooks, and Dan Tapiero. So make sure you got that notification bell enabled, guys. And I'll be talking about Mike Belsch a bit, a bit later in the video. All right, let's take a look at the market here. Bitcoin currently at over $47,000. Not much happening, guys. We are pretty much in a uh, building of a support level stage. So it's not exciting. There's nothing major going on with the price. But it's important, right? Because I've been showing you the Bitcoin weekly chart, and we see that we wrapped up uh, the week here with Bitcoin uh, closing out and still in this region. We're not breaking out yet. I think maybe we got another week to go, and I think the price can go a bit lower, honestly, um, because we are building the support levels. Because going back to what I said before we had this respective dip, is that we had about five to six green candles in a row on the weekly. Um, and that is th that can't continue beyond that. It has to correct. And then we work our way up to new all-time highs. So of course, I am expecting fireworks in Q4. I hope I'm right. You know, There's no 100% certainty here because no one can predict the future. But if uh, we look at the data, the trends, and the on-chain analytics, uh, we can we, we can expect to see uh, I think some some uh, movement upwards and I'm excited for that guys getting ready to take profits as I'm sure many of you are as well. Now take a look at this chart here. Um, it just shows how Bitcoin's market cycles are playing out uh, almost very similarly uh, you know across the different halvings because the halving is of course a mathematical algorithm built into the whole respective Bitcoin mining and production, right? Where every four years you have a cut in supply. So we are seeing from a technical analysis standpoint, just similar patterns of when the market took dips in 2013 and 2017, and, and likewise in 2021. And the position that we're in right now is for a breakout with, with the uh, RSI you know, on a downtrend and consolidating. And then and the RSI is the relative strength index and we could see it break out and go upwards, like we we're talking about, into Q4. So it's it's it, this is what I'm talking about when we have to look at the data, the trends, and the facts, right? Not your emotions. Yes, I want higher prices, but I have to make sure I leave my 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 uh, emotions to the side and look at what does the data show us. And historically, we, you know, we saw uh, the price break out. So I think we're going to see some things happening. In Q4, guys, uh, like I said, be prepared. And let me give credit to the person who uh, put this together, which I think is, is pretty great. Uh, this was TechDev on Twitter. Um, and he said here, Bitcoin will really shock you with its consistency. So we are seeing, once again, the having cycle uh, dynamics playing out here. 
Now, something I tweeted today, and I wanted to let you guys know, and it's related to Mike Belsch, uh, it's pretty amazing how many of the early internet pioneers are now in crypto. There's a lot of the folks who were in the 90s dot-com boom are now in crypto. And that's a great sign, guys. These these people were ahead of the curve then, then I think they're ahead of the curve now. So this includes ne the Netscape crew or the Netscape mafia, if you want to call it that. Brendan Eich, who I've interviewed. Bill Barheit of Abra, who I've interviewed, and Brendan Eich, of course, is, is part of Brave Browser. Um, Mike Belsch, and I'll be interviewing him soon, and Mark Andreessen. These guys were at Netscape. I mean, before Firefox, before Google and all that, right? They were part of building the internet. Uh, I said here, I've interviewed Brendan and Bill, and I'm interviewing Mike soon and hope to get Mark sometime. And once again, only a small group will adopt this new tech early and benefit from it financially while the masses are ignoring it. Uh, I hope you get what I'm saying there, right? We are on the side of smart money. We are the early adopters, guys. And we have the, you know, we're in a position to make significant returns. And like I said, just look at the people who are getting involved in building. Brendan Ike, the man is building Brave and the basic attention token. He built, helped build Netscape and JavaScript and, and uh, Mozilla Firefox, right? He's one of the founders. Um, and in Bill Barheit, of course, he has Abra. And in Mike Bell, she's part of BitGo, the custodian, right? <laughs> crypto custodian, Mark Andreessen, Andreessen, Andreessen Horowitz. They're investing in crypto, guys. I, I hope you see what's happening here. And this is why I try to bring you those interviews so you guys can get uh, educated and understand what is taking place. Um, it, it's amazing to see how these same people who were so successful in the dot-com boom are now here. And I think, once again, that's a big sign of things to come. Now, check this out. Jeff Roberts, who is an executive editor at Decrypt, um, the crypto website, uh, he tweeted the following in New York of a uh, street art, but look what's involved in this street art, crypto. Remember what we were talking about for years, guys, that crypto is going to go into the mainstream, into pop culture, into society. That is part of the adoption. Don't miss it, right? Look from a macro level. Forget if you like street art or you hate street art or how you feel about this particular one. That doesn't matter. What matters is this is crypto is becoming part of your people's daily lives, the things they talk about, what's on their mind, what's being covered on the news, part of art, TV shows so on and so forth. And this shows Richie Rich with some coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and uh, they have the Ripple logo, but obviously it's supposed to be XRP. But uh, <laughs> this is great news, man. I, I know, you know, some people would be like, dude, why are you sharing stuff like this? Because once again, macro level, you got to look at trends, how this is seeping into the mainstream and society. Anyway, here's what he tweeted with that image. Crypto is eating New York City. Just notice that Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP in Richie Rich's wagon. I love it. All right, check this out. Bitcoin fund launched by NYDIG or NYDIG has raised nearly $17 million to date. Now, remember what I've been telling you guys, pay attention to, to NYDIG. They are doing big things. They're a big Wall Street player, big connections to Benjamin Losky and so forth. So uh, NYDIG's Bitcoin Fund LP, which made its first sale in July 2019, has raised $16.95 million from a total of 121 investors, according to a Securities and Exchange Commission filing from September 17th. The prior filing published last October showed a total of $4.95 million in sales. So <laughs> their money uh, went up significantly, right? They're getting the investments and from over 100 investors. At least some of the total amount may have been raised thanks to a deal announced in August between uh, NYDIG and a broker-dealer firm owned by insurance, com com uh, insurance company Mass Mutual. And I remember Mass Mutual bought $100 million in Bitcoin last December. Remember that news, guys? That was big. So uh, let me give you some details. Select MML Investor Services financial professionals will offer qualifying clients access to the fund, which provides an alternative and efficient way to invest in Bitcoin, the company said at the time. MMLIS is named in the latest filing for NYDIG's Bitcoin Fund LP, which states that the broker-dealer will receive certain placement and servicing fees with respect to clients it refers to the issuer. Guys, 
this fund is not for you and me. You and I can't access this. This is for wealthy accredited investors. They're all coming. And remember, it starts with Bitcoin. And like we've seen with the likes of Grayscale and even uh, ETFs that have been approved outside of the US, it starts with Bitcoin and it goes to Ethereum. Then it'll still start building uh, ETPs and ETFs for different other altcoins, guys. So bullish. So bullish to see this. All right, let's talk about the XRP news. Ripple's David Schwartz tweeted about this saying, yay, <laughs> exclamation mark. So what is he happy about? Uh, here, the XRP Ledger Foundation tweeted, we are very happy to see that the reserves have been voted down to 10 over 2 by validators. The foundation firmly believes in increasing accessibility to the XRP Ledger and hope this trend will continue in the same direction. So to those of you who don't know about the reserves, let me give you the background and then we'll talk about what some other folks have said. So this is on XRPL.org. The XRP ledger applies reserves requirements in XRP to protect the shared global ledger from growing excessively large as a result of spam or malicious usage. The goal is to constrain the growth of the ledger to match improvements in technology so that a current commodity level machine can always fit the current ledger in RAM. To have an account, an address must hold a minimum amount of XRP in the shared global ledger. You cannot send this XRP to other addresses. To fund a new ad address, you must send that address enough XRP to meet the reserve requirement. The current minimum reserve requirement is 20 XRP. Now they obviously have to update this website. Uh, this is the cost of an address that owns no other objects in the ledger. Each new account must set aside this much XRP. Some of this XRP can be recovered by deleting the account. The fee voting process can change the reserve requirement if enough validators agree to the new uh, reserve settings. So they voted. We have the reserve drop from 20 to 10 this is great. This it increases uh, the ability for more adoption and usage of XRP in the XRP ledger. So here's what XRP Labs had to say about it. Today is a memorable day for the XRP ledger, for the XRP Labs team and all the Sum Wallet users. The UNL of validators changed the reserves on the XRP ledger, the account reserve was voted down from 20 XRP to 10 XRP, the ledger uh, objects offer escrow trust line from 5 XRP to 2 XRP. This is great, guys. This change took effect earlier today and affects all non-custodial accounts on the XRP ledger, also those managed with the SUM wallet. Uh, Zum, excuse me, SUM is a non-custodial XRP ledger client, client, meaning SUM doesn't hold your account. It merely helps you to interact with your own ledger account. Uh, it says here in the latest some uh, version 2.1.2, the old reserves of 20 and 5 XRP are still referenced. Uh, e example in uh, translations and the explain panel. We are currently working on a some uh, update bringing auto adjusted reserve references based on the live network reserve. So it says, please note that the reserves are uh, not taken away from your balance. Lowered reserves will also not show up as a deposit. So it says here, this means that you simply have more XRP to spend or lock up. Reserves ex offers escrows trust lines automatically. Great news, great news for adoption and usage. You're lowering, lowering that uh, reserve amount, guys. And I wanna share, some people asked David Schwartz some questions, uh, for example, uh, let's see here. Um, okay. So someone said, it, so if I had a wallet before that date, are my reserves still 20 over five or will the rest be released if I attempt to withdraw it? David said, your reserves are 10 over two funds previously locked to meet reserve requirements are now unlocked. So, um, you guys can check out this thread here where he tweeted, but once again, great news. And in the back of my mind, uh, as always, I keep it real with you guys. This is not financial investment advice. Did they drop this now because of the upgrades and the fact that they may be expecting more adoption and potentially higher prices? Maybe. 
maybe, right? <laughs> uh, it's a maybe, but uh, is it that that could be likely, right? And look, I'm I'm here for higher prices, <laughs> so make no mistake about it. I want to make money, right, guys? All right, Charles Gasparino, uh, continuing to beat the drum on the SEC. Uh, maybe beating the, uh, Gary Genser's head like a drum right now because Genser is getting exposed left and right. Obviously, he published an article in the New York Post. Uh, here's the title. Still a young crypto industry could grow stronger if the SEC allows it to, to uh, thrive. Now, obviously, he talks about Ripple, XRP, Ethereum, Coinbase, and so forth. Um, and here, to my point of what I said earlier, it's getting picked up. So here, uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth, who is a CEO and chief strategist at Quill Intelligence, she tweeted this article saying crypto and blockchain could usher the next internet revolution. U.S. stands a chance of killing business by driving innovation overseas and seeding advancements to others, including the CCP. Our regulators, mainly the SEC, are too turf hungry to understand danger of asinine approach. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and this is coming from someone with obviously credibility. Um, and and it's not like some random Joe Schmo. So this is what we want, guys. This is what I, I'm looking at this so closely because I know right now Genser and, and these guys are squirming a bit uh, because now you're, they're getting public scrutiny, right? XRP and crypto investors, people in the industry, crypto companies, people in, in Congress, uh, people who are just not even specifically in crypto or recognizing what's happening here. So uh, I think once again, Ripple is going to win this thing and the SEC is going to look like a bunch of boneheads. I, the only person I exempt from that at the SEC is Hester Peirce because she's the one that's been putting out guidance or trying to pr uh, guidance proposals to, to get Genser and the other folks to come on board. And you guys saw in my interview where she's like, Sometimes she feels like she's talking to a wall. They're not listening to her, but I think they're going to listen now because <laughs> they're going to look like idiots um, and what they're doing. Um, and obviously a lot of hypocrisy. You see Genser has said things in the past. Now he's changed his tune. And that's because uh, I believe personally that um, he's doing the bid of the banksters who control a lot of the regulators and politicians because of campaign donations, right? And they know a lot of the crypto lending, a lot of the things that people are gonna, can benefit from, uh, from crypto will take money out of their pockets. And unfortunately, uh, these regulators are not thinking about you and I, who are the people they're supposed to represent. They're thinking about the, a lot of these big banks. But um, I think if we put enough pressure and there's people in Congress that start to flip here, um, you know, we've seen Senator Toomey and many others calling out against her. Um, I, I think we're going to get the right crypto regulations. I think Ripple is going to win this lawsuit. And I think um, things are going to be OK in the long term. In the short term, it might be a bit painful because I'm sure Genser and the SEC, they're not going to go down without a fight. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm hoping for something to take place and end, end this lawsuit soon, maybe in Q4, um, early before the prices start going up. Now, do I think XRP is still going to go up anyway? Yes. But just imagine Bitcoin's momentum, right? Because the market moves with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's headed to $100,000. Then um, Ripple's, Ripple wins this lawsuit. XRP gets relisted. Good Lord. Floodgates, right? You're going to have, it's just going to be so bullish, man. You're going to catch that momentum, that wave, right? And uh, we could see the price go beyond what it would be just do with a speculation layer uh, with the lawsuit in place, right? You remove that lawsuit. It's like, yeah, you know, you're just lifting the floodgates open and the water's rushing in, if I'm making that analogy, right? So I'm hoping for that, fingers crossed. And uh, like I said, I'm here to make money. I'm passionate about the technology. I want to see it adopted because I do believe it's going to help, uh, you know, improve our lives and the people people's lives around the globe. But at the end of the day, I'm here to make money, like many of you. So, uh, I, you know, I keep it real with you guys. I I, I don't have any hidden agenda. I'll, I, like I said, I'm here to make money. That's why I don't have any tribalism or maximalism. Just what will make money, what makes sense. And uh, I ha obviously have XRP in my portfolio, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and so on and so forth. Anyway, guys. What do you all think about the news with the reserves dropping? I think this is great from a, an adoption standpoint. 
if you hold XRP, obviously. Um, and I think a lot of things are coming to fruition now. You know, the Songbird token is about to be distributed to uh, XRP holders who uh, participated in the Flare snapshot. So uh, let's see what happens. And maybe the next thing is a settlement. Well, maybe not a settlement. I know Ripple necessarily doesn't want to do that, but it might end in that. Maybe Ripple pays a small fine and we move forward. Anyway, guys, what do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.